for tonight's topic, uh, it's just, it's an essential topic for all kinds of shooters. And I'll just give a quick story of why. Um, when I first graduated the academy, probably 26 years ago or so, um, my lieutenant, the first day on the job, asked me to go out to the range with him. And I did so. I shot my pistol and he looked at the target and then looked at me and literally asked me, are you shooting buckshot? And that was just a, I kind of like, ha ha, yeah. And he was just dead serious. And so he took the time to actually teach me some of the fundamentals of shooting that I probably missed during the academy. And one of the fundamentals is exactly what Mike is going to be talking about tonight. It's going to be talk, he's going to be talking about uh, how to achieve a excellent trigger press. And when I did that, um, my group went from crazy out here to actually moving in. And so I'm going to introduce Mike now. Mike uh, is a certified hunter education instructor with the California Department of Fish and Wildlife. He's also a certified firearms instructor with Cal DOJ. He served our country honorably in the U.S. Army as a paratrooper and as a medic. With that being said, take it away, Mike. The floor is yours, and thank you so much for being here tonight. Hey, Eric. Happy to be here. So um, let me just give um, just a touch of a, a, a background to, to talk about why um, this subject is so important to me. So uh, I'm a firearms instructor, like Eric said, and um, what I get to do, get the privilege, I'm full-time firearms instructor, and what I get the privilege of doing is uh, I get to, to meet new people every day that are either getting into firearms or, or have been in for a while. And um, from my experience, uh, and I, I, I get to serve um, thousands of, of, uh, of people a year when it comes to firearms. And I can't tell you 99.9% .9 of us have an issue with this guy right here. And uh, it's, it's that trigger finger. And, and man, we can go out and we can buy the, the best Benelli shotgun and the, and the, the high end scope on our deer rifle and, and uh, our pistol uh, for target practice or for, or for hunting. And, and we can put all kinds of money in, into uh, the latest Terran tactical handgun and the, and the, 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 the best high end gear, but man, if it, if you can't control this guy, you might as well have gone to a garage sale and gotten the best thing that, that they've got there because um that is is what it 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 really comes down to. Uh, let me give you a couple uh, of quick anecdotes of some of the students that I've had recently. And um, I preach to all of my students. I'm like, listen, let me have, let me help you put me out of business, and let me teach you kind of the secret of becoming a great shot. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's shotgun, pistol, or rifle. Um, and it's, it's learning to dry fire. It's learning to, to make this trigger finger do what it is it's supposed to do. So a couple of quick anecdotes. I have, um, I'll give you two, two folks that I've worked with very recently. Um, one gentleman uh, I brought into firearms, helped him fire his first, first gun, helped him buy his first gun, um, walked him through the concealed carry uh, process and I got him to the point where he was going to get his his CCW certification class, and he was nervous leading up to it. And uh, but I hadn't seen him for about two months, and the last time I saw him, his group with a handgun at 15 yards was was about as big as the human torso, and uh, and I told him I, I said I said so make sure you practice because man you you know come back and let's get on the range work on your dry fire every day. And, uh, and, 
and we'll get you ready for the, the, the CCW qualification, which is uh, in Riverside County is a, um, the, the furthest distance is 15 yards and you got to make it in the size of a human torso. So he shows up for class and I'm like, hey, where have you been? I haven't seen you. He's like, yeah, I haven't, I haven't had any live fire rate recently. I'm like, oh man, this is, this is going to be a difficult day. And um, so he gets out to 15 yards and he takes his shots and, and his, his group is, is this big at 15 yards. And then his group at, at 10 yards is this big and his group at seven yards is this big. And I looked at him, looked at him and I said, you said you hadn't been firing. What are you doing? He says, well, you've been telling me all along that, that I need to, I needed to do some dry press, some dry practice. And, and uh, so that's what I've been doing every day, seven days a week for 10 minutes a day. I've been dry pressing. And I just I lifted up my glasses and I wiped the tear away. And, and he says, he says, what are you doing? And I said, I tell that to everyone, but no one actually listens to me. And he says, well, yeah, that's what I'm supposed to do. I had another, another student that uh, I told him, I said, I want you to be, to be is a bachelor work, you know, work 50 hours a week and came home and, and uh, wanted to learn about guns. And he was afraid of his guns and, and uh, he bought himself a brand new shiny Glock 19, never put any rounds through it. And we had a dry lesson in his apartment. And uh, I said, I want you to be doing dry practice. Explain me what dry practice is. And I said, it's going to, this, this trigger finger is going to, you're going to learn to control that trigger finger. And so every day, this guy's an obsessive compulsive. And I swear every day he told me he was doing 10 he started off saying, I was doing, doing 30 minutes a day. I'm like, no, 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 back off just 10 minutes a day. I want every day is great, but five to 10 minutes a day is fine. And he did that for three to four months. And then finally he said, okay, I think I'm ready to have my first lesson. He was so afraid of his firearm. And he came out and he said, um, he said, well, he says, what, what distance do you want me to start at? I said, just five yards is fine. And he, he took his, he, he, he took his shots at five yards and everything was in a hole this big. First shots he had ever fired in his life. And he said, well, do you think that maybe since the CCW test is out to 15 yards that we could go out to 15 yards? And, um, and I said, yeah, yeah, let's go out to 15 yards. And so went out to 15 yards and it was the same size hole, size of a silver dollar. He put all his shots in at 15 yards. And I just got the biggest grin on my face. He, he said, well, he says, what are you, what are you, what are you smiling about? And I said, I said, your shots are good. And he, and he said, oh, is it? I, I mean, you know, this is the first time I've shot. I, I, don't, I don't know. And I said, no. I said, trust me. I said, everyone else at this range is, is, if they knew that this was the first day you'd shot, they'd be angry. But he said, but, well, do they not dry practice at home? And I said, no, they don't dry practice at home. And, and uh, he said, so that's really good. I said, I said, yeah, man, that's really good. That's great. The fact that you're starting on your first day at 15 yards, you're putting things in a silver dollar. So that those are two stories I want to share with you guys, just so you understand um, what the what the what the concept of of dry practice does. And I would go as so far as to say that when you're talking about your accuracy, uh, the trigger finger is going to account for about 90 percent of your of your accuracy. That trigger pull, how you impact that gun, uh, because this isn't your this isn't your grandpa's 30 30 anymore this is this is um these guns come out of the box with accuracy like we we just never seen before right and stuff that stuff that comes out of the box now can outshoot most guns that were around 50 years ago but it's not going to do what it's designed to do unless you do what you're supposed to do and and the thing is is we're not we're not doing what we're supposed to do and so again i want to state it again that that trigger the trigger press is 90 percent of your accuracy you can you can go out and buy the best scope and the best uh the best shotgun you want the best best deer rifle you want but if you if it comes down to that second that moment then you're going to take a really an, a, end up being an unethical shot that if you if you can't control your end of the bargain then uh you're going to end up with with just a, a rounds going where you don't want them to go and as hunters that's what we want uh, we're, we're looking to 
to uh, harvest it in a way that's that's really going to um, cause as, as, as little damage, as little pain as we can to the animals that we're hunting. And so we owe it to them. So here's, I want to get into now the concept uh, that with all of the all of the shooters that I work with, I worked with a gentleman today on his AR-15. I worked with a, a lady yesterday on her um, on her shotgun. I work with folks on hand handguns all the time, and uh, I tell you, it doesn't matter if it's if it's precision rifle, uh, 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 anything inside of a hundred yards on a rifle, a shotgun, shotgun with slugs, shotgun with with buck. Um, uh, pistol with a pistol with a with a, a, a scope on it whatever you're shooting the last thing that you do before you send those that that round down range is is done with your finger and so here's here's what it's got to be is it's got to be a beautiful press so here's what I want you to think um, I promise myself so I'm a competitive shooter and I'm a hunter and I promise myself I'm gonna get I'm gonna just take 10 minutes a day and I'm gonna I'm gonna work on my trigger press, right? Bringing that bringing that trigger straight back. And I I I don't do it. I'd lie to you if I said I did seven seven days a week. I'm lucky if I get three days a weekend. But I am getting a couple days a weekend um, where I am giving giving my dry press. And and we started off my wife and I started off with low tech no tech dry press, right? And when we actually dedicated ourselves to the idea of working on the dry press to control our, our trigger finger, it, it did not take long to, uh, to see market, marketable gains in, in our grouping in shotgun, rifle, and pistol. Um, one of the things I do with, with all my students, no matter, no matter what they're, they're shooting, is I'll I'll have them I'll give them the give them their basics I'll give them what they need to to succeed and, and we're all you know when we're new into something we're gonna we're gonna forget things and then I'll tell them okay here's your target and let's say we're working with rifle at 50 yards I'm gonna say your target is is this big I want you to give me five shots give me five shots at that at that target that's the size of a fist Five shots, bang, 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 bang. All right, great. You're not happy with that. That's okay. Now let's perform a magic trick. You're going to like this. Clear your weapon. Make sure you're free of, of all, of no magazines, no rounds, no nothing. Now, you see that circle right next to the one you took a shot at, that clean circle? I want you to give me 10 dry presses on that clean, on that clean circle, but I don't want you to just pull the trigger. I want you to focus on one thing and it's this guy and it's pulling it back and then i want you to once you give me those 10 dry presses beautiful beautiful perfect dry presses then we're gonna load you up we're gonna take five more shots all right take the take the 10 dry presses presses click 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 and i talk them through and i walk them through it and then get them into taking five more shots at a clean circle and that group just instantaneously goes, comes down into a small into a small hole. Doesn't matter if we're shooting slugs. Doesn't matter if we're shooting uh, rifle. Doesn't matter if we're shooting pistol. It just takes a little bit of dry press. People just the eyes get wide, and I I tell you I love that. And that's my that's my my foray into their life when it comes to hey let's keep up this dry press. You saw what it did to you just now. Let's make sure that, that we're continuing that so your groups are going to continue to come in tight. So let's talk about the idea of, of why we need to do the dry press. So here's what we do. So I've got, I got, a, I got a, a toy dummy gun here, um, just shoots lasers. You can see on the back wall, right? So what we do with our trigger finger is take out the slack, and then doesn't matter if you're using uh, $1,500 optics or you're using iron sights or whatever you're using. What, what happens is one thing we all know for certain is 
iron sights, optics, nothing, nothing is staying still, right? If it's iron sights, it's moving around like this, right? And, and what we do is we say, okay, they're perfectly lined up right now, right? And then we take that trigger and we slam it to the rear. Well, here's a, here's, here's a little test that I want all of you to do. Uh, take, your, take your shooting hand. So mine's my right hand right here. Take your shooting hand. And I want you to take the two fingers in your other hand and put it in your palm. Okay, make your, make your finger gun like this. So I've got my two fingers in my palm. And now I want you to pull that trigger aggressively. Okay, so we're pulling that trigger finger aggressively. What do you feel against these two fingers? In your palm, the palm that is holding, controlling the gun, you're feeling those tendons and the muscles move aggressively in that hand. That's the hand that has the most control over your firearm. Okay, now let's take those two fingers again. Let's put them in that palm, close it up and make your finger gun. And now I want you to draw that trigger slow and straight back. Nice and easy, a nice, easy press. What don't you feel now in these two fingers? You don't feel the tendons and the muscles of this hand moving. And that's because we're controlling that by we're slowing down our trigger press. OK, so that's what we're going for when we when we take our when we take our press, we want to avoid this, that aggressive pullback. And we're looking to pull the slack out. And then it's a nice, easy press all the way through. And what I like to do when I'm starting this is if your trigger, let's say your hunting rifle has got a three pound trigger pull. When you're dry pressing with your with your hunting rifle with that three pound trigger pull, I want you to be thinking of pulling that trigger back and in your head, pounding off that poundage. Right now, I'm applying one pound of pressure, two pounds of pressure, three pounds of pressure, and then you get that break when you're not expecting it, right? And instead of giving it three pounds of pressure, work on giving it that slow press, okay? So let's get into some, practic some practical aspects of doing this with your shotgun, your rifle, your pistol. I don't care. Everything we're gonna, I'm gonna use today is gonna be some sort of pistol only because I can't get my rifle on the screen very well, right? So we're gonna, we're gonna use pistols so that we can use it here. They all got triggers. That's the one thing they all have in common. So the first thing I want you to do is when you start, it doesn't matter if it's your pistol, if it's your rifle, if it's your shotgun, first and foremost, everything is safety, 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 okay? So here's what I want you to do. You have some version of this. If it's your pistol, I want you to clear and make sure that you have no magazines in the gun, around the gun, or even in the same room. I want you to take your pistol and I want you to rack that slide three times. If it's your shotgun, pump it three times. If it's your rifle, run the bolt three times, okay? Then I want you to open it up. So open up the action. And then I want you to look and feel inside the chamber to make sure there's no rounds. Look and feel inside the magazine well uh, or the where the box mag goes or into the magazine tube of your shotgun and feel that there's nothing there. Once you are 110% sure that you have an absolutely clear firearm and there are there's no ammunition, there's no magazines anywhere in the room, you're ready to go to work. Okay. So what we're going to do is we make sure that that it's your action is is uh is set and you want to point into something that is ballistic. So we've just made sure it's empty, but we live in, we live in uh, California and the, the walls of all of our houses are made of drywall. I have one ballistic wall in my house. That's my chimney, which is right there. And so I'm going to point this thing only at the chimney when I'm pulling the trigger. So, um, what I want you to do is you point in at your chimney, right? 
And now here's the thing is I want you to watch my front sight. What we do with a pistol, with a rifle, with a shotgun, when we make an aggressive press, we move the, we move it. And if you're watching that front sight, that is your best indicator as to, as to how your press is taking place. If you don't have a front sight, then you're, if you've got a scope, then you're watching the dot on the scope. If you've got a bead on the front of your shotgun, you're watching the bead. Um, but whatever you're doing, you're watching the furthest point away from you, which is which is where the front side or the bead is. Um, if not, you're looking at the scope and you're watching to make sure your goal is, is that thing stays completely steady. Okay, a little bit of uptick on that one. But we're looking to practice, 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 and we're looking to draw on that on that dry on that dry chamber and get a nice click with no movement. Handguns, handguns go for right-handers. We'll typically go down left. For left-handers, are going to go down right. For um, our, our long guns and for, uh, for uh, all of our long guns, you're typically going to get a downward movement. And so you're looking to make sure that that sight is not moving, okay? So... That is something that you can do with every gun and make and make it easy. So if you saw this dot back here, wondered what this little dot's sitting back here for, that's that's what it's for. And what I do, here's how I do my dry press. And here's how I want you guys to consider how to do your dry press. Take a little yellow sticky note, draw a circle on it. I want it to be something temporarily, right? So this is a manila folder taped to my shutters. And I want you to make it a temporary thing because what I don't want it to be is I don't want it to be the light socket or the family portrait or um, the corner of a picture because you go and you dry press and, and you're done, you're finished and everything's good. And you say, well, just one more. And, and maybe that one more is an hour later or two hours later, maybe you've loaded the gun, maybe you haven't loaded the gun. But if it's a permanent fixture, if it's a corner of a picture or if it's a light socket, then that temptation is always there, right? But if I have this dot up here on a yellow sticky or in this case on a, on a manila folder, and when I'm done, I pull that down and I throw it away, I'm not, I'm not inclined or I'm not tempted to, well, just one more. Right. Because it's because what I want to do is I want to have a definitive period. I say to myself, I'm going to do dry practice for 10 minutes. And then when I'm done, I say to myself, I am done dry practicing. I put my firearm away. I put my my ammo and my mags, my box mags, and everything where they need to go. And I'm done dry firing. And I've taken all temptation away. So you want it to be in a ballistic, on a ballistic area. And again, for most of us, that's a chimney. That's about all we've got. If you've got a cinder block wall, that's a great place. If you've got property and you've got a dirt berm, um, that's a great place. Um, what you don't want to do is, is point it out the windows into the neighbor's, into the neighbor's yard, right? That's not what we're, that's not what we're going for. We want to point it into a safe place. Take your dry presses and you're working on making sure the front of that gun is not moving, right? And if you take your take your favorite handgun, your favorite rifle, your favorite shotgun, and before you even think about it, you take a press and you watch it, and, and you may not have known it, but that thing is probably moving. So here's a couple of things. That is low-tech, no-tech. And I'm telling you, if you, if you leading up, so when I shoot competitively, I shoot competitively about twice a month and leading up to my competition, the three days before my competition, I'm always dry pressing with my competition uh, uh, gun. I, I do, I do three gun, I do two gun, I do pistol. Um, and I'm doing dry presses with each of those. So that means the same thing. If you're leading up to a hunting season, then turkey season, fall turkey season's coming. And you should be taking out that 12 gauge, that, that 20 gauge, and you should be clearing it, making sure everything is, 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 is empty, no ammo in the room, and you should be doing some dry presses. 
and set yourself up into a realistic position. If you're turkey hunting in, in the fall, then maybe you're going to shoot with your back up, sitting on your butt on the back up against a tree. If you're deer hunting, maybe you're going to prop yourself up, up against your couch so that you're doing your dry presses in that, in that manner. If you can get down prone when you're hunting more often, then shoot from a prone position, right? But doing that low-tech, no-tech dry press is going to give you wonders. Now, let me give you a couple of ideas on how to work trigger press with a little bit of investment on, on tech, right? And it's going to give you a little bit more. So first of all, before I do that, let me cover one thing. Some folks will talk to you about um, dry press with a uh, ruining your, ruining your uh, firing pin or your striker, okay? I'm telling you that's not the case, um, that it's, it's not... Um, it's not something you should be concerned about. Uh, if you have a 22, depending on the gun, you could have some issues. If it bothers you, if you're concerned, get some good quality dummy rounds. The thing about the dummy rounds or the snap caps, whatever, there's two things I want you to look for. So I got a 308 and I got a 20 gauge. Um, the thing I want you to look for is that they are different colors than the ammo that I'm using. So for two reasons in, in the different directions, I am never going to accidentally get this in the mix with my, with my hunting rounds or my defensive rounds, and I'm never going to get my defensive rounds or my live rounds in the mix of this. I'm never going to be able to mix the two up. So different colors is number one, and then go for the rubber primers. If you're super duper concerned about your striker or your or your firing pin, get the rubber the rubber primers. Pay a couple extra bucks. Get them on Amazon for you're talking maybe twenty bucks for five of these. Okay, um, and these are metal, and so they have true weight to to what you shoot out of your firearm. Um, and you see, he's got the rubber, the rubber primers in there, and so anything that goes up against there is not gonna, not gonna have any damage on that. Um, okay, let's get into the no tech, low tech. So we talked about um, the, to we showed the toy gun, right? The toy gun you can turn into a game. You can bring the kids into it. Um, this is um, a laser light, L Y T E, laser light pistol. It does not have a beautiful, clear trigger press, but it is a trigger press. Comes with the cool little little pinger that lights up when you when you strike it, right? And um, you can make a game out of it. You can. The, it comes with two of these, and um, and you can turn on the sound and annoy the 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 parents, right? Put two of these around the house, work on your trigger press, okay? Because you're not going to, if you're pulling aggressively, you're not going to be able to hit something this small. All right, this will run you about 100 bucks, give or take. So this is a nice option. Um, something that um, you can buy in any caliber is going to be a, a bore laser or a laser cartridge um, this one is called um, Laser Bore Sight. This one is, is my favorite from a couple generations ago, the ELMS system. And what these systems, is, so this is obviously, this is 556223 right here. And then let me show you the nine millimeter size of a nine millimeter cartridge, right? And you simply take this and you insert it into your, your live firearm, just like you would around. You don't want to slide the, the hammer forward the first time. You want to ease it forward the first time. Um, and then what you have is, um, as the striker goes forward in this gun, it hits the, it hits the piece, uh, it hits the, the button, and it, hits a, it sends a laser down the bore. Okay, so you can... You can um, you can use this to get some visual confirmation of of where you're hitting. 
Um, and then you want to take, since it's a delicate device, you want to take your high tech uh, number two pencil with a rubber eraser, shove it down your barrel and drop it on the floor. No, don't drop it on the floor. Um, and then, and then that's going to, how you're going to get that out of there. Um, another step up in price is about $115. You can get these um, dry fire mags. So this is the company. They do um, have dry fire mags for rifles under a different company name. Um, and what this allows you to do is you insert this. So this piece right here allows the trigger to reset with without having to um, move the action. So, wait, we'll get there. There we go. Okay, so I can get a realistic trigger press without having to reset my action. Um, so that's something you can invest in, 115 bucks. Again, they do come in uh, with rifles, uh, rifle mags. Um, you can, if you want to drop a little bit more money um, into uh, into working on your trigger press, and you're afraid of having a live gun, a cert gun, S I R T. Um, and let me see, cert. They have a they have an, a, a rifle version of this. It's called the um, cert stick, S I R T S T I C, S I R T S T I C. And what the cert stick um, allows you to do is um, take this and put it inside of a, a, a makeshift rifle. It's about the size of, a, of an AR pattern rifle, but it allows you to go prone. It allows you to, to have your arms in the location where you're going to, you're going to uh, uh, be holding your long guns, okay? So the CERT pistol is the weight of a regular gun. It has a, it has a fake removable mag. It shoots lasers only. The trigger, it's got trigger reset. It's got the mush of the trigger. So trigger, pull, and reset. Um, these guys, uh, these guys, sadly, are, are expensive. You can get them uh, used 200 bucks, 300 bucks. But the nice thing about it is you're never wondering if you, I wonder if I got my chamber clear. By the way, if you ever wonder you got your chamber clear, check it. Right, but this is a nice, nice way to work on your trigger press. Okay, that's going to take you up the up the food chain a little bit more. Um, then let's go into um, what's my favorite uh, of all these, and this is some really nice tech. Um, it's pricey. This one runs about two hundred fifty bucks, but man, let me tell you what: you buy this and you're done. The thing about it is, um, you spend two fifty on this tech. And what you end up saving is, is thousands of dollars in ammunition and trips to the range, okay? So that's why I, that's why I even talk about this one. So this one is the Mantis, X, uh, Mantis, Mantis X10 Elite Series. And why this is a good piece is it comes with your um, sensor. And the sensor can be used for Pistol, rifle, shotgun, and weight, archery, right? So you can put this on all four, pistol, rifle, shotgun, and, and, and your bow. And you can, I'll tell you, tell you what it does, but you can get some really good feedback. It comes with this, comes with this adapter here, which fits on either your, um, your barrel, or your magazine tube, right? And it comes with a Picatinny rail on this end. You put the sensor on there. And then you simply download, once you've made the initial investment of $250 in this unit, um, it, it, uh, you'd never have to pay. There's no subscriptions, there's no nothing. And the thing of what Manus is doing is they're always advancing their software. So you buy it, in real time and literally weekly or monthly, they're improving the software, giving you new features, new games, new, new skills. 
they have this they have the skill challenge of the day they have the skill challenge of the week and so you compare yourself to how you're doing with other people who have the same unit so how it works is um once you put this on whatever firearm or bow you want you then download the app and you tell the the app what you're shooting long gun pistol bow uh shotgun rifle and it, you tell it i'm right-handed um and then you pick then you have to calibrate it you simply calibrate it by putting it on your light rail as an example of your pistol slipping it right on there and then setting it on the table without you touching it and that's how you, that's how hard it is to calibrate it that's all you're doing so then what you do is you start off the entry level um use of the manus the manus 10 manus x10 is that you are uh you're going to take 10 dry presses at any point on the wall you can pick the point what the what the system will do was it, it's got gyroscopes that go that that measure your up down forward back left right it, it, it 3d measurements and it tells you you don't even have to tell it where you're aiming it just says okay aim at the same point every time so a speck on the wall uh, a, a dot on your manila folder or your, or your yellow sticky. And it's going to then tell you everything that you're doing and you do an evaluation uh, launch of it. So 10 shots, pistol, rifle, shotgun, bow. And, um, and what you're doing is you're allowing the system to analyze what you're doing. Then it's going to tell you, okay, your technique, your, where you're messing up your technique is here. And here's where your shots are landing. And what it analyzes is, is astonishing. It analyzes where the gun's pointing before you pull the trigger, as you're pulling the slack, as you pull the trigger, and as you're letting go. It analyzes all that, tells you where, shows you where on the bullseye, the, the, the electronic bullseye, where you're aiming. And then it'll say, okay, well, Eric, what you're doing is you're pulling too aggressively and you're on your on your rifle and it's pulling down. Here's a video to show you how to stop doing that. Right. And then you you fix that problem. And then it says, OK, Eric, now what you're doing, your next 10. Now what you're doing is you're wrapping your finger around the trigger like this, as opposed to using the first meta metacarpal. And so since we see that, since we've sensed that that's what you're doing, Eric, here's a video to show you how to fix that, right? So that's the first, the entry level. And then it just goes competitions and games and all kinds of fun stuff to force you to have fun working on your, working on your trigger press. Um, so if you're not a tech guy, this is actually, it's a pretty, it's a pretty, for a big piece of tech, it's pretty tech less. If you look at it and you say, I don't have a smartphone or I don't want to deal with my smartphone, I don't want to, then you can always roll back to the plain old dry press. And, and again, what you're, what you're looking at is the front sight on your handgun, the front sight on your rifle, um, the, 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 the dot in your optic or the crosshairs in your optic, the bead on your shotgun, uh, the red dot on, your, on, your, uh, on whatever you're using your red dot on. And you're watching that thing move. And what you want to do is as you're pressing that trigger, did nothing move? And that's your answer. So let me give you just a quick tutorial. I'm going to step around the other side of the camera real quick. And I want to, I'm going to have you look in at the dot. And I'm going to show you a couple of things that you can be looking for. All right. So I'll step around. So you watch the dot. And what you're looking is, so without me really aiming, right, you can see the dot and that's what you're looking for. Okay, so what I'm going to do is with this laser option on this cert pistol, I'm lining up and I'm taking the shot. And what, what you want to see is the dot just appear right in that black. Okay, a little bit of high left. 
right in the center. And that's what you wanna see when you're using a little bit of tech. Now, here's what we see a lot of, right? If you're using long guns, a lot of times, you're gonna see a streak downwards and it's gonna look something like this. So you see how the difference between that dot and the streak, that means my barrel is moving as I'm pulling my trigger, okay? So with our long guns, oftentimes it's down. We're seeing that streak. Now you don't have to have a laser to see that streak. If you just use your dry fire and you see that that uh, your optic or your front sight or your bead dip downwards, that's what you're gonna see. With all of our weapons, especially our, our handguns, you're gonna see a lot of guys are gonna go down left if you're right-handed and down right if you're left-handed. So it would look like this. Or for the left-handers. So the idea is that with a little bit of laser assistance, you can see dots or streaks. If it's moving, it's a streak. If it's moving, it's wrong. You want to see dots, right? If that's if we're using any kind of laser tech at all. And if you're if you're using just pure dry fire, then you're just going to see that you're going to use your optics uh, to account for what you're what you're looking at. So um, I covered most everything I want to cover. What I want to do is I got trust me, I have a curriculum where I can go for hours on this, but I want to I want to see where you guys have questions. So what questions does anybody have that maybe I can build off of and and uh, anything I left out or anything you want to want to uh, check in on or challenge me on? What do you guys got to say? So one of the questions that came in on the Q&A function, Mike, is. Am I actually aiming down the sights when you're doing the dry press at the dot or pointing it while watching for movement in the sight? Yeah. So um, as you guys know, what you're what you're doing with your sights, if this is your front sight, right? I don't want to cover my target. I want to cut my target in half. Well, that's hard to see black on black. So let's go like this. Let's go, let's go pencil on pencil on on dot so i want to i want to still see the top half of that dot right so i want to place my sight so that it covers the bottom half and i can still see the top half and um so you're lining your iron sights your optic your bead up perfectly how you want to see it so your crosshairs are going to cover that dot your bead is going to cover that dot your, your front sight post is going to is going to cut that in half. OK, so if you're doing no tech, low tech and you're just doing plain old dry fire, you want to line it up like you're taking a shot on that thing. Like I want to put that a hole in that dot. Excellent. So one question that came in on the chat was. How does this fundamental work with competitive shooting when there is a timer? And then I guess a follow-up that I asked you during our practice is how does this translate to like shotgun when you're making a quick shot? So okay. how does, yeah. So let's, let's go uh, two different questions. Let's go with the uh, competitive work, whether, whether you're doing three gun, two, three gun, two gun, or, uh, or, or one gun pistol rifle is usually, or if you're doing skeet and trap, right? Um, as you're developing that muscle memory, and we know, I'm not a big fan of the term muscle memory, but everybody knows what it is. It's, it's the myelinization of, of you know, you're, you're creating memories in your brain. And that's how, you're, that's how you're developing a new pattern, a new technique. And when we're doing it nice and slow, right? It's the same way if, if you wanna run a, a fast 100 meter dash, 
you don't just get in the blocks and run a fast hundred meter dash, right? Your coach right. literally has to teach you how to move your arms and you're going to do that walking and skipping, right? Your coach has to teach you how to stride properly and you got to learn how to do all that. And you do that slow and then you build it faster and faster and faster. So what we're doing is we're taking our time. We're develop that, developing that myelinization or that muscle memory with our trigger finger. And the more we do it, the more we can add variations to it, like a double tap, pop, pop, or the more we can swing into the shot and take the shot. The thing is, is, is it doesn't matter if you're going super slow or super fast. It has to, it has to, um, you got to pull it in the same way. This is why you'll see if you guys are handgun guys, you'll see a lot of the 1911 guys will, will tend to be out of the box more accurate because the way that 1911 trigger is built is that's a straight back. It, it, it assists you in pulling straight back and that's what you're looking to do. So as you develop that perfect, um, slow, dry press, if you speed it up, so when I, I shoot USPSA and so I may shoot um, on a good day, I may shoot 28 shots in uh, 12 seconds, right? And you think, well, there's no way you have that perfect dry press. And, I, and on, on there's stages where I look at it, and I'm like, everything's down left, down left. I miss down left. I miss down left. I miss down left, right? But when I'm on my game and I get everything going, then yes, that, that's going to play. That's going to put into play. It doesn't matter if it's pistol, rifle, shotgun. So then let's go into the secondary question. Is this really relevant on a shotgun? Yeah, it's very relevant on a shotgun. If you want to try it out, try out that drill I told you. Uh, get, that, get that small circle and um and use uh slugs use rifled slugs preferably they're going to be more accurate take your five shots come over here to a clean circle same size same look same you know foot away take 10 dry presses at that clean circle then shoot your slugs and tell me if your if your group doesn't go like this at some level right and so then yeah since maybe since maybe at uh 20 feet uh, depending on your choke and everything, you, you know, your, your spread is going to be something like this. Well, there's not a lot of forgiveness, forgiving in that. We think of it as, as being pretty forgiving, but there isn't. Um, and, and if you are able to, if you are able to take you out of the equation as much as possible, pistol, rifle, shotgun, your, 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 our firearms are so much better if they could just work on their own without us messing it up. Excellent. Good job to explain that. And another question came in about if you're willing to demonstrate a good hold and trigger pull. On a pistol, I'm assuming. So, yes. so let's go, let's go right hander. Okay. So real, real short version of this is um, a right hander is going to come up with um, the, and so left hander is just exact opposite, right? So just give me a mirror image, my left handers that are out there. Your three fingers are together. They wrap around the gun and they're up against the trigger guard. So, so this, so this uh, knuckle or this metacarpal right here is up against the trigger guard. My finger is straight. Um, my thumb is pointing at my target. Um, you'll see a lot of guns and you can, you can see it here. They'll have the handguns will have the shelf right here. And that's where you, it's designed to place your finger there. A lot of us will shoot like this. A lot of us will shoot like that, but it's designed. It wants you to shoot like this right now. Don't worry. I'm going to, I'm going to give you some variations on this and talk about it. Now we get complicated and we, we take our, we take our four fingers on our support hand and we're putting them over fingers over fingers. And you see this finger, my index finger of my support hand is also up against the trigger guard. Okay. So my fingers are not spread apart. I'm not teacupping, right? Together and up against the trigger guard. Now, your thumbs are the opposite of your fingers. So what I'm going to do is remember my, as a right hander, left fingers over right fingers, but then I've got right thumb over left thumb, okay? And that's my, that's my perfect grip. Now, 
mic. That's the perfect grip. That's the one you teach all the students. So when you video all your competition shooting, that's exactly how you shoot every time, right? Not a chance. I, I actually, my thumbs come up like this and I watch all my videos and I slow them down. I'm like, who is this guy? What is he doing with his thumbs? He yeah. needs to take a lesson from me. And the, the most important thing on whether you come down, whether you even go left over right for a right hander, or you come and spread it out here or here, the thing I want to see is consistency right? Mm -hmm. Consistency in that area, whether it's pistol, rifle, shotgun is what's most important. Um, you want to build the, the perfect grip, uh, no matter what platform you're using, but consistency is the most important. Outstanding. So I think this is a good question. Uh, Scott put in the chat. He's talking about, he's asking, do you have any tips on holding steady while you press the trigger? So that's a common yeah. thing that I have too. Sometimes I'm very intimidated about my shooting and whether I'm going to get groups online because there is wobble. Talk, talk yeah. to us about that. Okay, so so let's talk about uh, and this man. I'll tell you what. This first first point is gonna is gonna upset some of my older brothers and sisters. So I'm 54. You can see I got the gray right. I was in the army and the army taught me something that's gone out the way, gone, gone by the wayside. Okay. I want you to listen to my breathing and watch my trigger press. So this is what the army taught me in 1991. Okay. They taught me to pull the trigger on my exhale for my older brothers and sisters out there. I'm 54. Come on and come on, old folks band together. That's gone. We don't do that anymore. Here's what we do. And, and here's how I want to show you one thing is I'm going to prove to you how this is awesome and it, and it works better. And you have at the bottom of your exhale, you have what's called a respiratory pause. Okay. So you pull your trigger at your respiratory pause. So it's like this. And here's why. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to stand on the other side of the camera and I'm going to, I'm going to engage this laser and I'm going to keep it engaged and I'm going to over exaggerate my breath and you watch how that laser moves when I breathe. Okay. Give me a second. Okay. So I engage the laser on the dot. And I take my breath and I watch how the laser moves. I'm not exaggerating. This is just how it, how it works. Okay, so my laser, my barrel is moving up on my inhale and out on my exhale, okay? And so that's a key. The other key to this to that to that nice break is you got to trust your optics okay raise your hands if you spent more than a thousand dollars on an optic go ahead and do it everyone do it right okay trust it man trust it those those engineers are so dang smart trust those guys okay so yes you're moving right you're breathing you stock something okay you should have done more cardio in the off season but you didn't do it okay your heart's beating right? You're breathing and it's moving around. Trust it. Take that press. Take that easy press. Don't fall into the game and say, it's on my target right now. And I pull that, pull that trigger, right? Trust it and take that easy press. Okay. Those are a couple things that'll help you um, get into a more steady shot. So, so key. And I think that was, I was so worried about being, you know, especially when you're nervous and you maybe you've got a little bit of buck fever going on and it's like, yep. there's no way that I'm going to be able to execute this, but you're right. That fundamentals, man, it's getting yeah. right back to those fundamentals. Your right. hand, when you got that buck fever going and you had to stock something and your heart rates north of 150 
and and maybe got old guy eyes and 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 your heart your you see your heart in your optic right and we've all been there on all those things and it's just trust in the trust in the optic trust in the tech and 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 work and work on the fundamentals of a perfect easy trigger press if you guys here's my two cents right as a guy who does this 7 days a week my two cents are eat do some sort of dry press just do it right either embrace low tech no tech dry press or just drop the 250 on the mantis x the mantis x10 and go for the gusto because that's 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 the benchmark right now there are some other great stuff out there the ems system i used the ems system for years before mantis x came out and it's it's got it's got an app and it's got a really good system and it's it's really good quality stuff elms sorry that's a good one too but man if you're going to spend 125 on this spend 250 on this one um just go for the go for the the real the the real good quality tech or if you don't want to do any of that nonsense Man, I'm telling you, just do some dry presses. Right. So for someone that's this, let's say they're getting out and hunting this this coming season, would you tell them to put this in their repertoire as far as practicing? I would. Uh, I mean, when it comes down to it, um, if you can, it, if you can promise me you're going to do, to do dry press consistently, um, then take out, take out a live fire session, save yourself a couple bucks, pay for that tech that you wanted to use. And so what I tell, what I tell my customers, doesn't matter if you're a CCW holder or um, someone who's looking to take a, a, a 200 yard shot on a, on a, on a deer or uh, or help a turkey find its find its way to your dinner plate or or whatever, um, you should be out there once a month live firing, right? And and I would I would tell you if you're going to consistently dry fire, if you're going to dry fire once a week, I would say you could take away a, a little bit of your of your of your live fire, and you could save yourself a couple bucks. Um, that's how that's how. I'm, imperative that's how valuable your dry fire is um there, i mean there's nothing like putting your cheek putting your cheek on the comb and 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 pulling the trigger and and getting used to that uh getting used to the recoil um but man that that dry press is is going to be so invaluable that is where you'll see a lot of times um whether it's uh, I've worked with a, a couple guys that are uh, sniper guys, sniper and SWAT. Another guy was a sniper in um, in uh, the Marines. And when they sight their rifles in, they actually don't touch the thing. They just basically they come in like this, and they they grab the rifle like this and pull the trigger like that. They want to engage. They want to not have themselves a part of that rifle. They don't want to mess it up when they're shooting their three shots to get their zero on a new scope or, or a new, new set of iron sights. They don't involve their body into that setup as possible. So that tells you if there's one thing we're going to engage with the rifle, it's this guy right here. That guy's got to be just about near perfect. Outstanding. Well, thank you, Mike. Thanks for your time. Thanks for your work as a hunter ed instructor. and. Thank you for going the extra mile to help us tonight. I really appreciate it. Yeah, you guys, you guys that are that are watching this, uh, either delayed on YouTube or watching uh, with us right now, feel free to uh, my email is right down there. Feel free to to send me an email, uh, give me a call at my business number that was listed there. Uh, help you in any way I can. Thanks, guys. Outstanding. Take care. Well done. Well done.